Welcome to this week's View on Africa. My name is Alan Ngari. I'm a senior researcher in the Transnational Threats and International Crime Program of the Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria. The recently concluded 28th African Union Summit of Heads of State and Government in Ethiopia adopted a decision withdrawing the um, African states from the International Criminal Court. But this decision was not adopted unanimously. In fact, some African states expressed reservations to this decision. I will be speaking to you about uh, the Africa, Africa's um, future uh, with relation to the International Criminal Court. The key issues that I shall address include, one, the withdrawal strategy itself, two, the fact that there were nine reservations by African states against the withdrawal strategy, three, the fact that this strategy represents a shift in the mood of African states on international criminal an international criminal court and international criminal justice in Africa in general. Finally, I will postulate what the implications of the strategy could be at the national, regional and international levels. Let's state from the outset that the decision is not binding on the 55 member states, but it is controversial. At the ministerial level meetings at the AU summit, some African states were clear to mention that they were against the withdrawal decision. These states, such as Nigeria, Cabo Verde, and Senegal, were completely clear that they do not want to withdraw from the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. They further argued that they had or individual states have the exclusive mandate and the sovereign right to make decisions on withdrawal from the Rome Statute. In this regard, the AU withdrawal strategy document does recognize that state sovereignty is, it, it, it is a sovereign right of every state to withdraw from the Rome Statute. It is important to note, however, that the African Union is not a party to the Rome Statute that creates the International Criminal Court and cannot therefore purport to make a decision calling for the collective withdrawal of African states from the International Criminal Court Treaty or from any other international treaty for that matter. The eight African states that expressed reservation to the ultimate decision that was made or reservations to certain parts of the decision or requested for additional time to study this decision are Cabo Verde, Liberia, Malawi, Nigeria, Senegal, Tanzania, Tunisia, and Zambia. We do know that there are other African states that are not, that are not in agreement with the decision to withdraw from the International Criminal Court. But aside from the withdrawal strategy, African leaders meeting in Addis Ababa were concerned about various other important continental matters such as the election of a new African Union Commission chairperson, and also considering the request of Morocco to rejoin the organization. It is likely that these elections, as well as uh, the geopolitical considerations around Morocco, may have influenced uh, the ultimate uh, position of African states on the withdrawal strategy document. I will now move on to discuss the withdrawal strategy document. The document itself sets out an accurate historical and political context on the creation of the International Criminal Court and the role that African states played in the creation of the court in 1998. Africa has faced numerous conflicts conflicts that have created millions of victims of international crimes, the crime of genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity. The strategy document itself singles out the evils of apartheid in South Africa, as well as the 1994 genocide that happened in Rwanda, as culminating in the Continental's resolve that initially hailed the ICC as a beacon of emancipation, a solution for the continent's injustices. 
The strategy, however, decries that since the ICC opened its doors in July 2002, its African focus, along with accusations of selectivity, led to the progressively worsening relationships, uh, relationship between the AU and the ICC. The relationship between African states and the AU with the ICC has been fraught with years of tension, especially because of the indictments against sitting African heads of state. The crux of the AU withdrawal strategy document, however, is its two-pronged strategy um, and, and comprised of legal and institutional measures as well as political measures. The legal measures that are included in the strategy are one, amendments to the Rome Statute, and some of these amendments that have been proposed by African states in the, in the recent past include a proposition or a proposal of amendment by South Africa to Article 16 of the Rome Statute, and this amendment expands the scope of the powers of referral and deferral within the ICC system of the United Nations Security Council to include the United Nations General Assembly, and also various other amendments proposed by Kenya, most notably an amendment to Article 27 of the Rome Statute, in which Kenya uh, sought the, um, the, 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 ex the, the exemption of sitting heads of state and government from prosecution at the ICC. The second legal and institutional measure in the strategy relates to reform of the United Nations Security Council. The Security Council has a prominent role in Article 16 of the Rome Statute of the International Criminal Court. It has been given powers to refer and defer uh, situations before the International Criminal Court. And specifically, uh, the ISS has previously um, uh, mentioned that reform of the Security Council is particularly important because of the current configurations of this body and, uh, and, and the imbalances that have been created in the international criminal justice field as a result of, uh, of its current configuration. The third uh, strategy under the legal and institutional strategy is an enhancement in the representation of African states at uh, the ICC, and it also pronounces uh, in its fourth ambit the need for African states to strengthen their national criminal justice systems. Now, within the principle of complementarity that is espoused in the Rome Statute, the ICC is a court of last resort. Being a court of last resort, it is the responsibility of states to investigate prosecute and try international crimes. African states have been unable to effectively investigate and prosecute international crimes on the continent due to the fact that there, have not been sufficient there has not been sufficient legislation and the capacity of law enforcement, prosecutorial and judicial officers in the continent has not met the required standard. A strong recognition in this strategy document that national laws and legal capacity needs to be increased in the continent only supports the fight against impunity for international crimes in the continent and indeed goes to give access to justice to victims of international crimes at the domestic level. This would be a true demonstration of the oft-repeated mantra, African solutions to African problems. The last of the legal strategies that has been proposed by the African Union withdrawal strategy relating to legal and institutional strategies is a ratification of the Malabo Protocol. This is a protocol on the amendments on the statute of the African Court of Justice and Human Rights seeking to expand the jurisdiction of this court to include international crimes. Only nine African states are signatories to this uh, in instrument and it requires 15 states to ratify the instrument in order for it to enter into force. It remains to be seen whether this regional mechanism will receive the necessary ratifications. The political strategy that has been uh, pronounced by the African Union uh, 
is the use of the open-ended Committee of Ministers of Foreign Affairs to engage with various stakeholders in the international criminal justice field. This body was expanded at last year January's summit, that is at the 26th summit, to be more representative of the ministers of foreign affairs from the different regions of the African continent, with a specific reason um, following a, an intervention by the Kenyan president, Uhuru Kenyatta, to look into the relations between African states and the International Criminal Court, and with a view to make propositions for a plan for withdrawal and collective withdrawal for that matter from the International Criminal Court. So the political strategy that this AU withdrawal strategy pronounces is the use of this open-ended committee of ministers to engage the United Nations Security Council, the permanent five members of this council, Russia and China separately, the Assembly of States Parties, its president, the African group of states parties in New York and in The Hague, and also the International Criminal Court Prosecutor. So what next then for international criminal justice in Africa? At the international level, it is unlikely that we will see any further statements or withdrawals of African states from the International Criminal Court. In fact, it is clear that this decision of the AU does not impose on any African states to withdraw from the Rome Statute. There remains 34 African states that are party to the Rome Statute that creates the ICC. And last year, October, we saw Burundi and South Africa deposit their instruments of withdrawal from the Rome Statute in accordance with the Rome Statute itself. They have in initiated the process of withdrawal um, and, and this should take effect one year after the deposit of the instruments in October this year. The Gambia has most recently, and yes, that is yesterday, indicated that it will not withdraw from the Rome Statute and is taking steps to withdraw any of the processes that were initiated in, uh, in, in, in the processes that commenced the process of withdrawal. But this, at the international level, does not mean that African states' concerns have been vanquished. Far from it. African states' concerns remain valid, and African states' concerns must be addressed at the appropriate levels. The continued mandate of the open-ended committee in an opening is an opening for a continued engagement with, um, with, with stakeholders. And this engagement is a constructive dialogue that we hope that the open-ended committee of ministers will have with the different stakeholders. The long overdue meeting between the open-ended committee and the United Nations Security Council remains key to this in addressing some of the concerns. In the past, we have heard that the committee has not met with the requisite level of, or the top levels of the United Nations Security Council representation. Interestingly, in the strategy, there's an emphasis on engagement with Russia and China. With a proposed engagement with the ICC, could we finally see a liaison office opening in Addis Ababa? From a political point of view, a more nuanced coordination between the African Union and the ICC could very well lead to less tension, less friction, more understanding between the two institutions, their mandates, and how each of those can, can, can proceed with, with fulfilling the objectives of their mandates. The ICC is completely reliant on state cooperation to effectively carry out its mandate, and um, a, a liaison office that brings the African Union in closer collaboration with the ICC can only mean that the ICC would be able to effectively carry out its functions with respect to investigations and prosecutions on the African continent. Going regionally, it is likely that the Malabo Protocol will receive additional attention by African states this year. As I stated earlier, there is not a single ratification for this Malabo Protocol, but more importantly, there needs to be 
a, a relook at some of the provisions of the Malabo Protocol and address some of the logistical and admi administrative challenges that may arise as a result of um, uh, an expanded international crimes jurisdiction to the courts. Finally, the strengthening of national criminal justice systems, as I mentioned, remains Africa's best um, chance at addressing international crimes in the continent. Enforcement and enactment of national laws and building the capacity of states, um, the law enforcement, prosecutors, judicial officers, ought to be a priority for African states and is a true demonstration of their, of their commitment to address impunity or to fight impunity for international crimes at the domestic level.